Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I have 10 amazing furniture flips for you. Some of these projects were disgusting to begin with and I know we all love a good before and after. So don't go anywhere because these projects are going to go by fast. Here we go with project number one. You can already tell the condition that this piece was in. It had been left outside. I see this happen all the time. So I'm using some super glue to glue back down the veneer since it started lifting because of the weather outdoors going from hot to cold, hot to cold over and over again. This is why you cannot leave your wood pieces outside. Even in a garage, this can happen. If you want to know more about like the details of what I'm doing here, you can always check out the full length video and I will have the full length videos of every single one of these projects linked down below in the description box. Now it is time to prep this thing for paint. I have to take all the doors off. I have to fill in the holes of the knobs. I'm going for a pretty different look on this piece than what I have right here. I mean, it can't get any worse, right? But I'm going with a French country, light, airy, and beautiful classic look on this, and I think you're really gonna love it. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Since the veneer on the top was mahogany, I'm going with a flagstone colored stain and that is to help to lighten up the stain color as well as tone down that red that's in there. Since I am going for that light and airy look, I'm going to be using some white and distressed knobs. I got these at Hobby Lobby. They have sales on knobs every once in a while where they're half off and when that sale happens, they are such good prices that they can't be beat and the selection is really good. But if they're not on sale, they can be a bit pricey so it's always good to wait. Now it is time to seal in all of that prep work that we did. I'm going to seal over all of the wood filler and I'm also going to seal every square inch of this mahogany because mahogany stain is notorious for bleeding through into your paint. Inside the cabinets, I'm going to be painting them with metallic gold to help them shine, look brighter, and to help accent whatever decor it is that I'm going to be putting on the inside. At first, when I had this idea, I was kind of worried that it was going to be a total flop, but once it's done, you're going to realize that it was a great idea. <laughs> you may even want to do it yourself. The color that I chose was a light beige. It's actually called Sandbar by Dixie Belle, but any beige that you guys choose is totally okay too. And I definitely went with a chalk paint because that French country look has that matte chalky finish on their painted pieces, and it looked gorgeous. I love this piece. I have this piece still in my home, and I can't wait for you guys to see the end result of how this paint color looked with the gold. A fun hack to get a streak free matte finish is to add your clear coat into your chalk paint. That way you can decide exactly how much you want to add, how much shine you want to have, and you can really get it to be matte this way. Make sure you mix it really well and after you apply this coat, which was just my second coat, it will be completely done and it will be sealed in and look fantastic. I added a fun gold tassel to the key on this piece and then it was totally finished. 
Let me know in the comments down below which of these projects is your favorite. I think in this video, this one might be my favorite, although I'm being biased, obviously, because I have it in my own home. But I want to know what your guys' favorite is. The next projects are these two benches. I made them match even though they were totally different benches and I went with some trending color, which is green. They were in okay condition to begin with. They just needed a little bit of TLC, some elbow grease and obviously a new coat of paint and upholstery. These type of upholstery projects are super beginner friendly and I used some quick Rust-Oleum spray paint. So this project only took me a very short amount of time and anybody who is watching this, you can do this too. It was such a fun and easy project and it adds so much life to your home, adding a little bit of color, adding a little bit of drama and having really unique pieces like these. For the upholstery on the chairs, I'm just using some one inch foam, cutting it out, spray gluing it down, and then covering it with quilt batting to help make it look more seamless. This way of upholstering is super budget friendly. I get mine from Walmart. It's so cheap there and you can reuse it on way more than one project. Usually you can get like two or three projects out of one roll of foam and the quilt batting lasts me like maybe five to 10 projects. You're just gonna use a staple gun to staple it down. I have an electric staple gun, but you can just use a regular hand powered staple gun on a project like this. These stools turned out so adorable and now they match, although they're not the same, I think that creates really unique character and I'm going to use one of these for a vanity in my bathroom and the other one in my bedroom. Aren't they gorgeous? This fabric I believe I got from Joanne Fabrics. For project number three, I had this old armoire that was built of all random pieces of wood, old paneling, just reclaimed everything all in here. I believe this is uh, like a shop project, maybe from a high school from a long time ago. It just seems to have that type of quality and things that it was made of seem like it was just reclaimed. Somebody who was really good at DIY put random things together to fix up this <laughs> really neat armoire But I was going to be using it in my entryway and I needed to brighten it up It had some water damage on it on the front panels and things and here you can see all the random wood pieces that it was made out of Which I thought was really unique But it also showed me that this wasn't some like extremely valuable antique and I felt very comfortable with painting it I did it in this light color, I believe it's called Mineral, and it is a chalk paint from, just from Walmart. It took two coats, and then I did a really neat finish on the door panels, which you'll see soon. To keep this project very budget friendly, I'm just going to glue on some really neat fabric in here that has like a bit of a woven texture to it. To help disguise the wavy water damage that happened to these panels, I didn't want to go out and buy new paneling. Wood is so expensive right now and it's also the perfect size. I'm using less products, saving money. There's just a lot of reasons for me to keep this piece and just recover it with some fabric and then put it back in. Although it was a little bit difficult to line it all up to get it nailed back in. I got these handles from like a yard sale or somebody gave them to me, maybe my mom gave them to me, I'm not sure, but I've had them for a very, very long time in my stash of random hardware and I just painted it the same color as the rest of the piece and it's going to help to disguise the waviness in the door as well when I place these handles in a specific location.
The end result is this beautiful classic antique look. I imagine this would be a piece of furniture that somebody would discover in an old French chateau. There's a lot of YouTube videos of people exploring old abandoned French chateaus. You should totally check them out if you ever get the chance. But now it is time to move on to the next project. Project number four is another piece that went in my entryway. This was my grandmother's and it was made of all fake pressed wood and just like a fake wood veneer over it. The only real wood thing on this whole piece was the little um, spindles that are on the legs. So I was not too concerned about painting this piece either and it had a lot of water damage on it and waviness and it just got a little bit damaged in our move. So I went over it with a textured finish and I did kind of a plaster finish on it just using wood filler. I've never seen this done before and I had never tried it before but boy did it turn out really, really beautiful. And I definitely think you should consider this if you have some kind of fake wood furniture in your home that got water damaged and bubbly, it will look gorgeous if you try this. Once it's dry, you're just going to hand sand down any ridges that are sticking up higher than you'd like. It's really up to you what aesthetic you want, so sand it to your heart's desire. Then after that was done, I vacuumed it and painted it white. That was all it took to turn this piece from drab to totally beautiful and fabulous. I can't wait to show you how it looks in the end. The last thing I had to do was scrape the paint off of the mirror, which is so easy and way cheaper than using paint tape. If I could pick one word to describe this makeover, I would choose refreshing. This looks so new and refreshed and bright and airy and clean. Even though it is textured, it still has such a bright, clean look to it. I definitely want to try this method again. But time for the next one. Project number five was a project that I did for one of my Ugly Duckling Challenge videos. And I did a really unique theme for this one. It was around Halloween time and I wanted to kind of go along with the, the theme of things that people may dress up as as Halloween, but still something that would look beautiful in your home and can kind of go with many different styles. And this was absolutely hideous to begin with you can see how disgusting it really really was it looks as though it is totally moldy but it's not that was some kind of paint finish that just kind of aged really badly <laughs> but it turns out gorgeous in the end I promise and you are not going to guess what the theme is I'm sure but if you do guess it comment down below to tell me if you guessed the theme before I reveal what it is at the end of the project here the top of the dresser was made of some kind of formica material, so I'm using slick stick as a primer to help my paint stick to it. Although I was using chalk paint, I still wasn't trusting that the chalk paint would stick that well to the formica. And the black color that I'm using is going to be a primer for the unique finish that I do on this piece. And I want to know, let me know if you have ever seen somebody do a finish in the style that I'm doing. And I'm going to be using pearl paints. Have you ever seen somebody do spray pearl on furniture. I'm going to be spraying a mica powder that is pearlescent and the way that I do it is I mix it into a clear coat and spray it on with the clear coat. So in a way you can be done with your project as soon as you spray this pearl on there. Although I do prefer to spray another coat of clear coat over top of that just for extra durability. But look at this color. Holy guacamole. That is the most beautiful teal green I've ever seen in my life. I wanted to keep this piece so bad. I just didn't have a place for it. I've never to this day seen another piece this beautiful green color like this. What do you guys think of the pearl green on this piece? Also, have you guessed the theme yet? I love the hardware that it came with and it had all of the pieces which is rare so I just cleaned them and then put gold rep and buff over top of them to go with the gold base that I had created. Mm -hmm. 
ta-da! The theme was the Wizard of Oz. I even painted some ruby slippers to go along with it. What a fun, gorgeous piece. And I'd love to inspire you guys to try out new colors, to try out new types of finishes. This was really budget friendly. The mica powder is cheaper than buying paint. I got it on Amazon and I'll have it linked in my Amazon store. I've used mica powder before in a white pearl and it turned out absolutely stunning, which I do want to try again. I also have a pink pearl that I'm really excited to try as soon as I find the right piece for it. But what do you guys think of this dresser? I am dying to know what you think of this color. I adore it. Project number six. This base to a dining table was a curbside find and I wanted to turn it into an island using this piece of marble on top of that dresser. The marble that was on that dresser was not original to it. It was way too big for the dresser and I thought it would make a really good countertop for the top of a kitchen island. It already has this really unique raw wood look to it that I want to keep going in the design as I'm changing it into a kitchen island. The marble that I'm going to be using was really destroyed. It had some kind of chemical, maybe like a solvent or an acid that had been spilled on it that ate away at the marble so badly that I could not keep it original. And I also figured out that it was too skinny and the island itself was too short. So I had a lot of customizing that I needed to do on this piece. The first thing that I'm gonna do is make it a little skinnier so that it does fit that piece of marble. After I was done prepping that whole base to the island, it was time to fix up the stone for the top. It had some chipping on the edges and some jagged edges here and I tested out just regular old wood sandpaper on here and it turns out marble is soft enough to use sandpaper on. I'm going to refinish the marble with some oil based enamel paints. I'm starting out with white rolling it on to have kind of like a primer or base color to it to be a lighter color stone top and then I'm going to do a faux stone finish on it using this rust-oleum spray paint that looks like a stone texture and I kind of experimented with it as I was spraying it on and while I was here I bought some feet for the piece because again remember we needed to raise it to make it a little bit higher. With this stone spray paint I just went really really light with it and then once I was done I played around with it, sanded off some of it, did a little bit more of it and just messed around with it until it looked how I wanted it to look. Next I applied some stripper and used that to take off some of the finish and what I couldn't get off my husband came in and sanded off for me because it was time for me to go in and make dinner for the kids. In order to raise this island I'm going to create some feet out of this block wood that I got from Lowe's. I'm cutting it to the size that I need to get it to be island height and then I'm going to apply it using some wooden dowels and lots of wood glue. When I put the top on it just looked a little too plain for me so I dabbed on some paint to create more white flecks in it. I kind of was inspired by my own granite countertops in my kitchen which I have since renovated my kitchen quite a bit and I'll show you another day but I wanted it to look more like stone something more unique and then I sealed it all with a matte poly acrylic This piece I sold and then used the proceeds from selling it to give a giant tip to a waitress that we had serve us our breakfast. I love doing those surprise big tips. I've seen a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube do them and I highly recommend doing it. It's a wonderful experience. Project number seven is this cute little chair that I got. It has a woven seat on it and it was in a 
ugly, <laughs> dingy color that I wasn't really a huge fan of, but I got it from a yard sale for about $5, and I'm going to do the easiest flip on it that any of you guys can also do, and it doesn't require any special tools. I just cleaned it really well with some Dawn dish soap, and then spray painted it white. I wanted to go for a bit of a coastal look, and I also wanted to make it look new, bright, fresh, clean, everything opposite of how it had looked to begin with and it really turned out beautiful once it was done with the paint i just took that that taped off section part off and now that woven seat looks so beautiful but i still put a cushion on over it just to make it really comfortable since this is now my chair for my office slash craft room it was such an easy flip anybody can do this project number eight is something that is really really special to me these East Lake dressers sell for over $2,000 when they have been refurbished or if they're already in really excellent condition. This one was missing its top. It could have had a marble top to it or it could have had a wood top. The ones that I showed you the prices of just now all had wood tops and stuff so it could have gone either way and I'm going to just restore this beauty back to its former glory. With the help of my husband, we really turned this piece around. It looks stunning at the end. So make sure you don't go anywhere because this flip is going to go by quick. First and most importantly, we are sanding down the sides of these drawers. Those joints are called nap joints and they are also called coven and pin joints. It it's really just depends on what you decide you want to call it. But they help to date this piece to tell me how old it is. So it is from somewhere around the 1870s. Can you believe that there is a piece of furniture that I can fix and use in my own home that is way over a hundred years old and it'll still look better than anything that I can buy new at a store? Absolutely phenomenal. My husband right now is taking apart a dining table top and we're going to use half of this dining table top as the new top for this very antique dresser. The dining table is originally from the 1940s to 1950s and these tables are notoriously way too short for the average height person now. So we're repurposing this into something that is going to be so much more useful than the original dining table was. Plus I'll show you how I repurpose the legs of this dining table later on in this video. Something really cool about this dining table top and the dresser that I'm working with is that both pieces have wood tones that will complement each other so that I can keep it with its original wood finish. This tabletop has a mahogany veneer over the top and that dresser is solid cherry. And I mean solid cherry. There is no veneer on that dresser whatsoever. It is like one inch thick solid cherry. If you tried to build that nowadays, it would cost you a fortune. But we're gonna use this mahogany top, refinish it and re-shellac it since back in the day, everything was shellacked quite a lot so we're going to use the original type of finish my husband used the router to create a really beautiful edge for the top of the dresser and it's going to look as though this was on there originally you can see the pine showing along the edge that he routered and i could have stained that to match the whole rest of the dresser but i actually liked it it looked a little bit like an inlay and i thought that it would stand out really cool I'm just using some beeswax finish to rehydrate the sides of these drawers and show off that beautiful nap joint or coven pin joint. Next I'm going to hand sand any of the little areas that are um, imperfect on the piece and then re-shellac over those. You can do this if you're going to keep the original wood finish without adding any stain. If you're going to re-stain something a different color you would have to completely sand it down to bare wood before you could do that but since I'm keeping it original I can just shellac right over the spots that I sanded and you'll never see them. Now it's time to attach the top and there was already screw holes there so my husband just attached it using the same screw holes that were there originally and then I went over it with shellac like I did on the whole rest of the piece. Something else that's really neat about shellac is that once it is dried it is completely non-toxic. In fact a lot of times it is what is used to um, seal in paint on baby's cribs and baby's toys that are wooden toys they use shellac a lot of times on those because it is safe for them to put in their mouth once it is dried. The last pieces that need to be restored in this dresser are the hardware drawer pulls and I'm just using some metal polish. You can use any kind of metal polish that you want as long as it has the name of the metal that you're polishing on the bottle. 
I believe these handles are actually solid brass and I am extremely lucky because this piece still had all of its original hardware. There was one piece that I couldn't take off so I had to polish it while it was already on the dresser but I'll take that any day in order to have all of the original hardware. Solid brass, super thick, you couldn't afford to get that stuff nowadays. What started out as a very sad dresser with a missing top has turned into a classic beauty that is full of history and craftsmanship that you cannot see in pieces that are made today. I currently use this for my baby clothes and it is definitely something that I intend to pass down in my family as a family heirloom. For my last two projects, I have the bases to that Duncan 5 style dining table that I used as the top of my dresser. Since these tables are notorious for being too short for modern sized people, I thought it would be great to repurpose these two bases into two side tables. I'm going to create a drum style shape for both of these tables, but I'm going to refinish them in two completely different styles. Something else I'm going to try out for these side tables is concrete. I'm going to experiment with a product called Feather Finish. I've seen it used on kitchen countertops before and I thought it would be really neat to create a concrete top for these two side tables. So they are both going to have concrete tops but I'm going to do them in two different styles. I also got some bending board that I nailed on. I tried to staple gun at first but it just wasn't strong enough and so I used a nail gun instead. You could hand do nails with a hammer and nails to do the same effect. But just because I do this for a living, I wanted to do it more quickly. And you guys know I have a bunch of little ones at home, so projects need to go quick because these babies need their mama. Now it's time to mix the feather finish. I just mixed in water until it was the consistency that would stick to my board and not drip. So kind of like a peanut butter consistency. And I went over it, created a texture, a bit like how I did the textured finish on that entryway hall tree. And then I sanded off any of the super rough edges before I sealed it with a concrete sealer and then I also will later on put on a clear coat. If you want to see the full length tutorial of how I did all of this, remember I will link all of the full length videos down below in the description box so that you guys can check them out if you have any questions or feel free to comment with any questions you might have. For this table I'm going to go dark and I chose that same color that I actually used as the primer for my Wizard of Oz dresser. And then I went over it with some white glaze and then did the feet in silver before doing the clear coat. For the second table, I did the opposite effect. So I first primed it with white and then I went over it with some wood filler because there were some cracks in the wood. Like I said, these pieces get discarded, so it was in pretty rough shape. The color I chose to paint it was a really beautiful beige color and then I also did an antiquing over that to create some depth. I was having a lot of fun kind of doing the same but opposite with these tables. So the first one was silver, I did the second one with gold. First one was dark, second one was light. But they both are stunning classic beauties with an updated neat concrete top. I feel like this type of application can be used for outdoor things too. So I definitely intend to try this feather finish product on something to use for outdoors or maybe for a plant stand. I know for sure people use it for kitchen countertops. So it is a durable finish. I just really want to have fun and experiment with this one some more. If you got this far in my video, I just want to say thank you so much for all of your support on my channel. If you like what you saw today, don't forget to hit the subscribe because I do furniture flips like this all the time. I'm also working on some home makeover stuff and then I also do smaller home decor stuff and thrift store flips. And before you head out, be sure to comment down below and let me know which one of these flips was your favorite. I still think that my favorite was that really neat display hutch with the secretary cabinet in it. But I don't know. It's so hard to choose. Thanks for watching. Bye.